Okay, so you've read the title and let's face it, you're thinking... Let's cut the fanboy bullshit and set it straight. For over 10 years now, I've been a fan of the PlayStation brand. Starting off with my PSP, then going to the PlayStation 3 that I bought in 2008, and now with the PS4 since launch, PlayStation has always managed to give me something that Xbox, PC and Nintendo could not. However, don't get it twisted, there are plenty of bad moves on Sony's part that have happened over the past years and that I keep calling them out for, also in videos every single time. That does not make me a fanboy, it makes me a guy with a preference, aka a fan. Fan, fanboy, you see the difference? In this episode of My Opinion Sucks, I wanted to go over why it is that PlayStation is not only killing it these last years, but what it is that always makes me come back for more. Sony is undeniably winning this console generation, mostly due to its great start back in 2013. With Microsoft making so many anti-consumer mistakes, PC being present but never really a part of this race, and Nintendo doing, well, whatever the fuck Nintendo does. The road was pretty much paved for PlayStation to succeed. And here's the funny thing, in the first two years of PS4's life, I barely ever thought that success was very deserved. With an underwhelming amount of exclusive games, many remasters to fill in the gaps, PS Plus now required to play online, disappointing third party games and plenty of other reasons to complain, I barely noticed any positive difference over the vastly superior last generation. But that feeling slowly faded away when we entered 2016. Not just for the amazing games we got, like Ratchet & Clank and Uncharted 4, but also for the slew of announcements we saw at both E3 and PSX. Ultimately, the reason I play video games is, well, for the games of course, and this is where the PlayStation shines. With more than 10 first party studios, Sony has always managed to deliver quality exclusive games that you simply cannot get anywhere else. On top of that, what I respect so much about them is that they tend to take risks, to create big budget games that aren't always the safe choice. Look at Death Stranding by Hideo Kojima with its completely over the top setting. Look at Detroit Become Human with its emphasis on storytelling in a very strange world. Guerrilla Games made the successful Killzone franchise but were given the green light to do something else. And guess what? It completely paid off. Horizon Zero Dawn has been getting amazing reviews and will undoubtedly be one of Sony's next big franchises. You could even look at Media Molecule's game Dreams. I'm not gonna lie, I highly expect that game to flop, but that's not the point. These games are allowed to happen on PS4, and it helps move the platform forward. And even when we're talking about the gigantic IPs that are just too financially successful to be ignored, risks are taken there as well. God of War has completely dropped its original setting and gameplay formula, with a new level structure, combat system and focus on a character driven story that I already can't wait to play. Uncharted with Nathan Drake after 4 main installments is done. And The Last of Us Part 2, apart from the fact that it's only the first sequel, has moved its protagonist role over to Ellie with a complete shift in its emotional theme. Meanwhile, on Microsoft's end, all I hear is the Coalition was forced to drop work on its new IP Shanghaiist to work on new Gears of War games, Recore is mediocre and Skillbound... Now that's funny and all, but my intention here is not to start another fanboy war. There are definitely reasons to be playing on other platforms too, and I want to make it very clear, I actually do as well. I bought a Wii U for Mario Kart and Super Smash, just like I'm buying a Switch for Zelda and Mario Odyssey. But with overpriced peripherals, a stuck in the past attitude and simple lack of quantity in games, it makes me confident the Nintendo Switch will be nothing more than another financial flop for the company. I use my gaming PC to play Counter-Strike and Hearthstone now and then, and while it's true that the best graphics and biggest quantity of games will always be found there, I don't know many big budget exclusives that are actually worth 
worth playing, let alone that don't always fall in the same RTS, MOBA or FPS genre. And Xbox, I've never actually owned one, even though I've always told myself I wanted to at some point. But with Microsoft's recent decisions to get rid of exclusives altogether and just bring them out on PC as well, I might as well play them there, right? And then I haven't even talked about that constant reliance on those same three games, Halo, Forza and Gears. But then I look at PlayStation, I look at the future and I see the gigantic amount of games, currently more than 15, that I am legitimately excited for and can't way to play. Games that offer not just great gameplay experiences, but also interesting settings and deep stories. It's safe to say, the future on PlayStation is looking very bright. In the end, play the games you enjoy and play them on the platform you want to play them on. The ideal gamer owns all consoles and has access to all games that come out. Of course, due to money constraints or simple lack of interest, most people stick to a single console. For me, that's mostly been PlayStation for the last decade and it's not looking to change anytime soon. Why? Because when it's all done and dusted, when I look back at my top 10 games of the last decade, there is one thing I notice. Most of those games are PlayStation exclusives, making it almost impossible for me to say that if you're a gamer with the same taste as me, it's almost a crime not to be playing on PlayStation right now. You'd be missing out big time. Obviously, that's just an opinion, my opinion, and my opinion, well, you know how it ends. Thanks a lot for watching this third episode of My Opinion Sucks everyone. As always, if you enjoyed the episode, then please leave a quick like to help support my channel and share the video with your friends. With that being said, you can expect to see a new episode in the series every Thursday, so go and check out the other episodes if you hadn't seen them yet. And then for now, thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again next time.